Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So welcome back to our Fighters of the World series. We're going through this, basically this big picture here and uh, going through all the fighters and just generally having a bit of a talk about them, getting some basic facts of, of them, comparing them and just having a bit of fun basically. So we've done column one, we've done column two, we've done column three, we've done column four. We're now on column five, uh, which has got a kind of a mixture of weird different planes, but let's go through them and see what we can find. First off is a big thunder chunky of a thing at the top there. Mig, now I can't actually read that. Is it 1.44 or 144? 1.44. Why is it called that? What a weird name. It was a project that the Russians had. It was a display of technology. It was basically they did it to counteract the US's advanced tactical fighter competition, which mm -hmm. gave us the F-22 and the mm -hmm. F-35 in the competition. Maybe a bit stupid of me saying, but it doesn't look much compared to those, does it? It looks like an old, almost like an 80s thing. Square inlets and... Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, if you look at the, basically, profile of it and how it looks from each angle, it looks more like a Eurofighter, and if you look like oh. it from behind, it looks more like a spaceship, though. <laughs> so is it uh, is that a Delta Wing and four planes? Is that yeah, it's a at? Delta Wing with the front canards. And it, uh, is it was it st it's obviously late like 2000 something like that. So what was it? It's actually developed in the 90s, um, and it was scrapped in 2000. And what was um, it, what was this thing? Was it stealthy or? No, I th think it was just to get them a tactical fighter. I don't believe they knew about the stealth fighter technology that the U.S. had. I mean, nothing on it looks stealthy, but I'm, then again, I'm looking at a tiny little picture, so I don't really know. Okay, so why did they scrap it then? What was, was their reasons behind that? That time period, uh, they didn't have a lot of money. Oh, yeah. So they were just running out. Roger, so this was uh, a few years after the collapse of the Soviet, I suppose. Soviet Union. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So, okay. Um, is it vector thrust or is it normal thrust? It does have radar absorbent materials which may have been the first attempt at stealth. Okay. Yeah, they might have attempted it, but I don't think they would have gotten through. At the time, more stealth was more like the F-117, which was the radar absorbent material on the angles. And it is a fifth generation uh, air superior slash strike fighter. Um, from what I'm reading here, Cap, mm -hmm. they did research into thrust vectoring with this mm -hmm. and i believe they implemented it into it so yeah, in fact it could be vectored in both pitch and yaw how interesting according to the, yep that's pretty and cool. it, it also doesn't tell us why it was canceled but it seems like it they said it was canceled because the engineers found problems with it after the test flight Right, okay. Uh, so it never made it into service then. They had probably a couple of prototypes or something like that by the sounds of things. One prototype. <laughs> oh, only one. Okay. Uh, we've got any facts and figures on it. Um, do they know how fast did they get it? Mach 2.24. Okay, so it's pretty fast. Okay, and what what motors has it got on it? Um, it's got two Liuka AL41F turbofans. 39,680 pounds each. Each, wow, that's enormous. That is... Yeah, that's a lot of thrust. bigger than pretty much anything. <laughs> so, And it is a thumber of a jet. It's massive compared with, with most of them. So, it, Yeah, but it, and it was light. Apparently it looked a bit light, too, in kilograms. But if you look at it in pounds, that's where the number rises. Because its empty weight was 40,000 pounds. All right, fair enough. So that's that. Uh, anything else before we move on? Uh, it was uh, eventually called the... MiG-35, but they then took that name and applied it to an advanced version of the MiG-29. So the MiG-35, which they thought this was going to be, mm -hmm. now transition to the MiG-29 advanced. Fair enough, boys. Uh, that's that. Uh, North Americans. So the first one appears to be our F-86. I mean, we've got an F-86A there. Uh, the F-86F, uh, I think, we have in DCS, uh, which is pretty awesome plane. Everyone loves it. Um, obviously, Korea War era, so early fifties. When was the first? When was the first saber introduced? Have we got that? Uh, the first saber was introduced in 1949. Yeah, right. Okay, so we've got an axial flow uh, turbojet with about ooh five thousand pounds, four thousand, five thousand pounds, something like that. We got uh, so this must have been the first swept wing fighter or one of the first swept wing fighters in in the U.S. arsenal. 
Uh, it's got, I think, from memory, an all-moving tailplane. I don't know if, uh, or ele- ele- elevators, I should say. I don't know if all of them had that, but certainly the F version that we have had that. Uh, max speed was, from mem- my memory, Mac 0.95. And its contemporary fighter was the MiG-15, I'm right in saying, aren't I? Yeah. And the J-29 to none, the Swedish one. The J-29? Yeah. We're not there yet, Tail. <laughs> We're not there yet, Tail. We're working through just one by one. We're at the Sabre, Tail. <laughs> oh, he's saying that's a contemporary. No, we did the contemporary. Oh. Hmm, okay. And it was better than the MiG-15, basically. Um, in some ways, the MiG-15 was better than it. Um, in outright power to weight and stuff like that but generally the F-86 came out on top also the F-86 had the first G-suits as well so they could and, all be uh, G's yeah it had the first G-suits and the I believe it was the first um, radar gun sight yeah, yeah, radar gun sight which is uh, pretty cool pretty, uh, a little bit sensitive and temperamental we find in DTS, yes, but pretty good it was a six times Browning uh, 50 caliber machine guns, uh, which was mm, it's interesting. I find them a bit lightweight, at least in DTS. Uh, opposed to the MiG-15, thumping great 37 mil cannon and a couple of 27, 23 mil cannons. So a bit of different doctrine in the um, uh, in the in, in the gunnery, at least. Yeah, I think they're a little weak in DCS as well, because if you watch like the documentaries and the Dogfights channel, the Dogfight show from History Channel, where they talk to the veteran pilots of it, they would they would tell you that the 50 cals cut the MIGs in half. Yeah, like he, there was one where he was talking about chasing one, where he put the sight on the MIG and shot off one burst and cut the MIG's wing <laughs> off. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, yeah, and as well as guns. Um, at least the later versions were dropping bombs, firing rockets, and had um, the Sidewinders. God, my memory's a bit crap now. Uh, uh, it's uh, Sidewinder Bees or C? I think it was the Sidewinder Bees, the Lao... God, I can't remember what they were called. The Cap- hey, Gal, wait. Gal. Uh, Cap, I believe uh, from the beginning they were dropping bombs as well. Oh, really? Because okay. I believe it was the fighter that had the better range out of all the US ones and they needed to provide support for the milita- for the ground troops in the mountains uh, it's made its mark in history in the Korea- Korean War obviously and again this was back in the days when um, a fighter would only last for a, two or three years before it was superseded because technology was moving on so quickly obviously but yeah it certainly laid its mark anything on the say before we move on right you guys are going to have to help me with this because I can't read it a weird looking thing called a Yankee Foxtrot 93 Mm-hmm. What the deuce is it? Uh, it's a prototype aircraft, and basically like the YF-23, and at the time the IF-22 during the advanced fighter program, the Y they designate for the experimental aircraft during the okay. competition. Okay, so what what do we know about this? What was it? It doesn't look supersonic. It doesn't really look like a fighter. What was there, something special about it? It was um, a fighter development for the Sabre, and it was a radically different variant and received so it received its own designation I know just yeah it was basically created as a penetration fighter so it could fly over 2000 nautical um and yeah it was the upgraded f86 oh right okay uh i see instead of a uh, uh, intake at the front it's got intakes at the sides with a single engine still uh, yes, it was. And it's, it's got a swing sweep on there of some kind, yeah. Except this, this single engine, it was able to get a max speed of 708 miles per hour. Is it, have we got a Mac in there? Has it got a max Mac uh, in there? No. It's hard to convert miles per hour and not stuff into Mac because it, they didn't tell you what altitude they do it at, at, but it sounds subsonic. Yeah. It looks subsonic to me, at least, anyway. Yeah, it says no, 615 yeah. knots. Yeah, that's six hundred fifteen. Okay, it's yeah. fair enough. Um, um, is um, and was it carrying sidewinders? I'm guessing carrying missiles as before sparrows. I guess. No, it was only a prototype, and it was um, proposed to have six twenty mil- six M twenty four cannons, which are twenty millimeter, mm-hmm. but they were never fitted. That would be pretty cool. All right. Well, if anyone out know any anyone out there knows more about that, I'd be interesting know, uh, knowing about this. I never knew it existed. Uh, just one more thing: is it? Do we know if it's carrier or if it was ground based or supposed to be carrier or ground based? I suppose. Um, from ground. what I read, it was an Air Force prototype where they ordered two of them. A firm. 
cool. All right, let's move on to something. The F. It says F1000 Super Saiyan, but I thought F100 decap. Oh, I was going to say yeah, F100. So this is this is something I've always been interested. I've never known uh, much about it, but I've always been interested in it. Now my what I know, which is not a lot, was that it was the first supersonic. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So this is, yeah. yeah, it was. Um the North American Aviation, they basically delivered an unsolicited proposal for a supersonic day fighter to the Air Force. I firm. And is the single engine after burning? Is that what we've got here? Um, hey, yes, it was. Yes, it was. I've got a power on the engine just to, just to roughly um, find out where we are. 16,000 pounds wow, force so this is with a, afterburner. This is like nearly three times as much as the old Sabre uh, in, in terms of power. So that, have we got a designation yeah. on the engine? It's before, it's not J79, is it's it? It's the... Pratt and Winnie, Pratt and Winnie J fifty seven. Fifty seven. Yeah. Okay. That was used on a couple of others that we've uh, been through. Okay. If that intake at the front still it's got a swept wing, more swept presumably than the F eighty six. All moving. Elevon. Um, uh, I've heard lots of bad things about it. Like it killed lots of people. I uh, as in as it killed lots of its own pilots. I have no idea why. We'll probably go over that. Um, was it a missile fighter or a gunfighter? I'm guessing missile fighter. Uh, it was a missile um, fighter. At the time, it was um, both, I believe. It carried four 20mm cannons. Oh, wow. And it also carried four AIM-9s or two early air-to-ground missiles, the AGM-12 bullpup, or hmm. two or four Lao 3A rockets. Do you know what uh, version of the Sidewinder it was, tail they had? Just to spew out my interest. Uh, it was... Oh... I, uh, it just says that it Sidewinder. Sidewinder, so yeah. yeah. That's fine, one of, the, one of the early variants. Okay, and do we know uh, an entry into service and when it exited service, please? Uh, it entered into service in the 27th of September 1954. 54, which is a good few years on then. Yep, and it retired in 79. Wow! That's okay. Okay, that's a long uh, service history. Oh, the one interesting too: the Turkish Air Force, the Chinese Air Force, and the French Air Force all used it as well. Really, I really hope we get this plane. Oh, I just want to know more about it because I just I've obviously never seen one. I don't know anything about it. Uh, well, have we got a top speed on this? We'd love to get have a Mac top speed. Uh, Mac one point three. All right. Okay. So that's where we are. Uh, at the moment. Uh, yep. Mac one point three. Uh, one more fun fact: It could actually carry nuclear bombs. Oh, really? Four types. Well, we're, we're in that part of history at the moment, really, aren't we? Where everything happened to carry, everything wanted to nuke everything, basically. Okay. Yeah. It must have been a very small bomb because it looks like a small fighter. What it is, I can see it by the size of it. Uh, it's honestly, you think it's a small fighter, but at the time it was a decently sized one. Because uh, here on the page it has um like th three of them flying next to a bomber mm -hmm. and they're actually pretty big compared to it okay anything you guys want to add to the super saber uh comparable was the uh, mig-19 so mig-19 let me just backtrack slightly to mig ba -ba 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 -ba. i've got the mig-19 there yeah the right. upgraded yep. mig-15 sorry, sorry was that mig-19 did we say i, I missed that yeah, yeah, Mig 19. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, that's the one we're, we're going to be getting as well. Right, cool. Okay, it's an interesting period in aviation. Interested in this. Cool. And this is Air Force. This isn't Navy, is it? I think these are all Air Force. Uh, no, yeah, this is not Air Force. The Navy didn't get these. Cool. I know there's still Sabres flying about. I'm, I'm guessing there's no one knows that Super Sabres are flying about. I, I guess not. I don't think Super Sabres are flying about. Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, let's move on to something that is a bit weird. First of all, it appears to have skewered a man, as Peter Tube has. And this is a batshit crazy looking thing a YF 107 Ultra Saber. What the deuce is this? It's a fighter bomber. Okay. Um, it was um, another prototype that they wanted. It was to replace the Super Saber. Mm -hmm. It was a fighter bomber design, like he said. Uh, it had also included a lot of innovations compared to it. Uh, uh, by the way, one more cool thing, if I remember right. It had a downwards ejecting shower, mm -hmm. if I remember right. Why? Because of the in is there's an intake. The Super Saber? Ultra Saber. Ultra Saber. Yeah, the Ultra Saber is the downward ejecting because the intake's yeah. on top. Why is the intake on top? Because that's weird. I don't like weird. Uh, 
Watch because it. reasons, Cap, because reasons. <laughs> Because it was a prototype, just a stupid yeah. one. Okay, Tail, sell this thing to me. Why was it so special? What was what was its advanced features that I'm not aware of? Oh, uh, for the first it had the downwards ejecting seat, which was one of the first one, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, I also think it was uh, super fast That's with, uh, with that type of the design. I knew you were going to say that, because I look at the size of the tail fin and uh, the amount of your stability they're trying to get and I'm guessing yeah. that's due, due to the huge speed they're trying to put into so what speed did yeah, they clock with, out of it with Mach one engine it says Mach 2 plus whoa yeah. okay is this a thing did they build this or is this just someone's uh, it was three it. prototypes ah, uh, one engine can hit me with some specs of that engine I want after burning unit what engine was it uh, how much power Pratt and it, Pratt and Wendy. Whitney YJ seventy five P nine. It produced twenty four thousand five hundred pounds of thrust. Oh, it's a big old thumper. It's like as big as an F fifteen engine of the mid seventies, late seventies. So, so and what, what 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 period in time was this? Vietnam. So this is Vietnam. So this is late sixties. Yeah, its first its first flight was in nineteen fifty six, and it was retired the year later. Oh, so this is way before Vietnam, and this is just after Korea. Yeah, yeah, this is just after Korea. Yeah, this was required by the Air Force in order to uh, fly nuclear weapons, but it was never used. Right, okay, so they said, it sounds like they said, build me a Mach 2 fighter bomber that could pop me a uh, a nuke on uh, on Roscoe's head. Okay. Yeah, it carried um, four 20mm Pontiac M39 cannons mm -hmm. or a one 20mm six barrel M61 Vulcan. Nice, one of the first with the Vulcan in, okay. And uh, did we have any missiles on, on this jet as well? Uh, no, it only had bombs, which hmm. you could carry a thousand pounds of, ten thousand pounds of. Nice. Okay, cool. I mean, this it sounds like I never really made it into history, obviously, into service, uh, three prototypes, but that's an interesting looking plane. I'll be yeah, interested. It is. Interesting. Um, I'm going to research more about that as soon as I get a chance, but that's cool. Right, uh, let's move on to the very successful Tiger and Tiger 2. Uh, I don't know a great deal about this. A uh, very uh, uh, small understanding, lightweight fighter designed, I think, for export, or at least it became for export to other countries and became extremely well used all over the world because of its cheapness, reliability, and it was just a pretty cool fighter as well, as Tail would probably regale this of many stories. Uh, who's got a history of this thing, when it came, why it came into practice, when it came into, when it came into service, etc.? Yeah, Cap, like you said, the reason why it was because the US needed a fighter to export and they didn't want to give other countries their more dominant fighters like the F-4, <laughs> so they made the F-5E and F-5F Tiger II. Mm -hmm. And it was a competition to replace that 5A, which was the Freedom Fighter. So, what was the, what's the difference between this F5A Freedom Fighter and F5 e and Tiger II? They look the same to me. Is there some difference there? That I don't uh, aware of. They are almost identical, but they uh, 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 but they have several uh, different upgrades uh, b uh, between each other. So. Yeah. For example, the F5E Tiger II has a more modern radar. Okay. It also has a more powerful engine at 5,000 5, pounds of thrust. Each. Yes. <laughs> Mojo. Okay, that's with afterburner, so they're still pretty weedy little engines then. Like I said, designed to be cheap, cheap and very reliable. Okay. Um, so, so these... Sorry, go ahead. And it entered service in the 60s and still in service as a 2014 500 aircraft. Wow. Mostly like adversary trainers, um, but it's still out there. Wow, so it shows how successful it's been there. Fun uh, fact, when I was coming back from work one day, I saw one on final to land. Nice. Went right uh, over me. One more thing. Um, Iran have actually done several modifications to them. For for, for example, twin tail, and uh, and another one which is also modified in some way. Oh, interesting. Which which are then illegal, uh, not licensed or so. Iran are awesome. They just like pick planes like the F-14 and F and Tiger up and just modify them. That's what I would do if I had a company. Unfortunately, Cap. <laughs> Hang on a sec, guys. Because what's up? 
Nothing. Okay, so let's try it. Carry on, guys. Carry on. Yeah, unfortunately, Iran takes the cool aircraft and modifies them. <laughs> They're the reason why the U.S. scrapped all the F-14s. Oh, uh, all right, fair enough. Uh, let's talk about armament. Uh, no, let's just talk about speed. Now, from my memory, at least the Tiger II was Mach 1.6, so well into supersonic. Has anyone got anything different there written? Um, yeah, Tiger II is 1.6. Okay, I'm guessing the Freedom Fighter was pretty much the same. And uh, 60s, we said, uh, at the time, and obviously a hugely successful uh, service career um, and we know with the Tiger 2 that we get in DCS uh, bombs, rockets uh, AIM 9s at least the early versions on R1 or relatively early versions the GBU 12s oh yeah so laser guided bombs so all sorts uh, there's, 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 and you, you drive it quite a lot don't you tell yeah indeed I do uh, oh this this is Great, I'm just looking at what the missiles it can carry. Go ahead. And it says four times AIM 9 Sidewinders or four times AIM 120 AMRAMs. Oh, yeah, I know. bash it crazy. Yeah. Or two times AGM 65 Mavericks. Wow. I've got a problem with this. Are you sure this is. We're not talking about the Tiger shot. We're talking about the Tiger at the moment, aren't we? Uh, F5 Tiger, Tiger 2. So why can't R1 in DCS fire AMRAMs? What, what, what am I missing? Uh, there? They had too little documentation on the uh, on the radar and so on, just for that uh, certain export version. Uh, though it's super easy to just implement, okay. I think. Yeah. yeah, we could probably modify it, get it to fire them. Uh, here's my problem with that, guys. With to fire an AMRAM, well, this uh, maybe this isn't particularly exactly true, but to fire an AMRAM, you're going to want a big whopping great search and intercept search and track radar. That can shoot out, you know, that th can th lock things 60 miles away. As far as I'm aware, the F5 never had anything like that. Am I wrong? Uh, you would be wrong. Uh, uh, later versions have uh, uh, have like better and smaller radars. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, meant they are just contemporary to maybe the. So it's yeah, it's it sounds like there's the later versions, 80s and 90s versions that had AMRAMs and the up and the AGMs and stuff like that. By the sounds of it. Unfortunately, we also can't put on the two times 30 millimeter cannon pause that the F5 can also be oh, have. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, plus one more thing. Uh, it also has air to air refueling capability, which mm -hmm. wasn't uh, neither in implemented. How strange. Does the F5 have air to air capability? Yes, several different export versions. I wonder why we got the kind of crippled version then that can't do anything. That's weird. For, uh, for example, Morocco's uh, have, uh, have air to air. And I think Chile, Chile, oh, yeah, however you pronounce it. <laughs> I believe Brazil's does, but I know Brazil did a lot of modifications to it, including a new cock. Basically, you have an entire nearly new cockpit that's modernized and everything. Weird, wicked. Uh, I, it sounds like that's why it's been so successful then, because it's been upgraded constantly every 10 years by the sounds of it. It sounds like we've got an old kind of 60s version or an old yes, early yeah, 70s yeah, version so. in, in DCS. Yeah, we definitely need the 2018 version. That would be yeah. wicked. Eagle Dynamics, okay. get us the Brazilian F5. That would be sick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll pitch for that then, guys. We'll, 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 try and, we'll try and get something in. All right, all right, we've spent enough time on this. It's obviously, you know, it's cool fighter. Uh, let's move on to its, uh, what could have been its contemporary, uh, its, its replacement, which would have been batshit crazy. The uh, Foxtrot 20 Tiger Shark, one of my favorite creations of all time. Who wants to have a tackle at this? Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this was something that never went into service. It was something that was built and pitched about for someone to buy it, and someone should have bought it. And it was basically, uh, essentially, an, uh, uh, an upgraded F5, and they got rid of the tacky little cheap, crappy toy engines, and they put a whopping great, I forget the designation, but the, an, uh, uh, an, a legacy F18 engine in it, making it incredibly powerful and fast. Have we got a power figure and a speed figure on the Tiger Shark, guys? Adam. Mind. Yeah, it was a single General Electric F404, mm. which produced, um, one second, I just backed out of the page. Uh, Cap, by the way, take a look in media. Uh, uh, the, uh, there's a photo of the F20 cockpit. Right, so a little picture. So that's, uh, yeah, the modern MFDs, UFCs, just a, in fact, it's just an F18 cockpit, basically. 
proper hard. Yeah, exactly. Oh, imagine flying that about, guys. Absolutely awesome. That would be great. One second, let me put in media the Brazilian cockpit, because I believe it's something similar to it. Right, so that's the Brazilian F5. Wow, how sick is that? Beautiful modern cockpit. F5. So this is still the Tiger 2, though, isn't it? Tiger 2. Yeah. Completely modernized. Probably he's got a half decent radar on it. Awesome. Yeah. Let's, um, let's try and get that. Let's try and get that. Right, let me get back to my picture, guys. Yeah, it, it, the single engine produces 17,000 pounds of thrust and it reaches Mach 2. Awesome. So you've got a Mach 2 fighter, tiny little package, still pretty goddamn cheap, super maneuverable, uh, as we know. Um, and um, modern avionics, basically. Um, do we know what it was? It was designated to carry all the modern gear as well, AMRAMs and AGMs and stuff. Uh, negative. It, it uh, was the most modern missile it had was the Sparrow. Right. And speaking of Sparrow, just to clear up a misconception a lot of people have, let's go back to the 14 for a bit. The AIM-54 Phoenix was a missile designed for fighters, not bombers. So it, it was the first missile also to hit a fighter that was pulling six plus Gs. Interesting. I did think that. Uh, I got shouted down by Sherman, but I did think that. Um, because... Okay, I'm not going to go into it now, but yeah, that's cool. Uh, back to the Tiger Shark. Um, uh, we said it wasn't Amram's. What, what time in what period in time was the Tiger Shark demo? Uh, 1982. 82. 82? So, oh, it was before Amram's anyway in that case. Right, okay, that will make sense. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, it carried the sparrows like the Tomcat. Right, so just a mincing, awesome little fighter that should have been, but it wasn't. No one bought it in the end, which is a real shame. It would have been pucker, but whatever, deal with it, suck it up. Okay, we better move on, guys, because it's been ages on the F5. Now, what is this monstrosity? F, can't read it, guys. Scorpion or something? 89 Scorpion. Is it Northrop still? Yes, it is, isn't it? It's Northrop. Uh, yeah. It is. Right. It was the first American all-weather interceptor. No, not first American all-weather interceptor. It was an American all-weather interceptor built in the 50s. 50s. And it was the first jet-powered aircraft designed from the outset to enter service. So, right, so we're... Okay, we're all here. And is this Air Force? Yes, Air yes. Force. Okay, funny. Imagine landing that. Look at this tiny little landing gear. How the deuce do you know? Have you ever seen the... What's it called? The B-1 landing? Uh, yeah, I used to... Um, I used to have the luck of um, going to the Milton Hall Air Shows back in the... Oh... 90s and uh, you know back in the 80s and the B1 used to do uh, literally fighter spec air shows it was actually crazy sorry I don't know where that came from but yeah so the F-89 Scorpion was introduced in September 1950 it was retired in 1969 it was the first combat aircraft armed with air to air nuclear weapons <laughs> so, That's you know, if you want to go back to that hold up excuse me <laughs> yeah that's, so is, is this period in time again? I love this period in time where everything was nuclear powered. The kettles were nuclear powered, bikes were nuclear powered. So why not just put a nuke on your on your sparrow and just blow everything up? You know, then you don't have to bother hitting it and have a guided system. You just blow the sky up instead. They were unguided. You just yeah, it unbelievable. And fired it. Yeah, it yes. <laughs> so basically, God. if you fired it, you're fucked either way. <laughs> Please yeah. never have that in DC, because it'll be the worst thing in the world. All right, so, okay. So this hey, Cap, I mean, it'll be a great fucking countermeasure, because you got <laughs> someone on your tail, just fire it off. <laughs> it'll blow the sky up. Okay, it's a funny-looking thing as well. It's a big old thing, straight wings by the looks of it. Those great big uh, tanks on the outside. I'm guessing they're not the engines on the outside of the wings. I'm guessing they're fuel pods or something. Engines must yeah. be inboard. Um, tell me how awfully slow this is. I uh, know I can see how ugly it is, but how slow is it? Yeah, it is flying the impressive Six speed of uh, 635 miles per hour. Miles per hour, that's 550 knots. 52 knots. Yeah. Okay, uh, that is actually pretty, uh, pretty fast, actually, isn't it? Maybe in a yeah, it had, vertical It time. had, at the time, it was fast. Mm. It had two Alice, Allison J35 A35 afterburning turbojets. Afterburning? Okay. It doesn't look like an afterburning plane, but all right. Wow. And it pro with afterburner, it produced 7,200 pounds of thrust each. Each. 
so 14 10. all right interesting i'd like to maybe see one in the flesh one day before i die i think that'll be interesting but okay how wouldn't it be cool to be able to go and see all these planes in irl i know they can't fly, aerospace but. museums in the united states well, that's great but i can't barely move from my chair but one day one day all right we've, we've spent enough time on this with thing uh right now this is going to be an interesting one the black widow i'm sure i will have lots of supporters all around the world for this so i uh, let me do my little spiel first guys and then you can add you can fill in the 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 info so my understanding is 1985 um and from the from government or whatever to the air force um they said they wanted a new tactical fighter and um, out of it came to, uh, two planes, the YF-23 and the YF-22. The YF-22 won the competition, became the Raptor. This was the its contemporary, YF-23 Black Widow. Unbelievably cool spaceship-looking thing. Obviously, what we'd call Gen 5, so stealthy and, and whatnot. Non-vectored thrust, but interesting fact. Um, it had such amazing pitch authority. You can see those... Um, um, it, it didn't have tail fins or elevons. It had a mixture. So, uh, from memory, so it had this weird combined tail elevon thing, and just these these tail elevon things were bigger than the wings of the whole F F sixteen, um, and it, and it had absolutely amazing maneuverability. That's pretty much all I know, apart from it lost probably due to politics, but whatever reason. So you guys start filling me in uh, with what you know about the YF twenty three. So the funny thing about the YF twenty three is that. During the if during the competition, it was stealthier and faster than the twenty two. Mm -hmm. However, it was less agile. Okay, it is bigger. I can see that. Can anyone see the twenty two anywhere? There it is. The Raptor is there, and the Raptor is a big, very impressive big jet when you see it in air shows in real life. But it's quite small compared to the Black Widow. Yeah, funny thing about the Raptor is the entire cockpit is still classified. So pictures you see of it usually have a lot of stuff blacked out. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And so the YF-23, like you said, it was politics because it was developed by McDonnell Douglas and Northrop. And the U.S. kind of had a sour spot with McDonnell Douglas because of the F-15. And even though the 15 was an excellent fighter, it ended up costing more than what was originally pitched. And it took longer to deliver, I believe. Okay. Okay, so have we got any specs on this Black Widow? Engine power, speeds, just something to get my teeth it around. It had um, two Pratt & Whitney YF-119s, or, or the General Electric YF-120 after burning turbofan, which produced 35,000 pounds of thrust each. Sounds similar to yeah. the Raptor, very powerful. Yep, it could do, more, it could do Mach 2.2+, plus, mm -hmm. and it would super cruise at Mach 1.6. Wow, what a beast. And this is going to be another one of these planes with a stealthy uh, bay, I guess, for weapons. Yes, it was. It was stealthier than the 22, remember? Mm -hmm. So it had a single 20 millimeter Vulcan, and it could carry four AMRAMs or Sparrows and two Sidewinders. Okay. It also had a service ceiling of 65,000 feet. Roger. Interesting. Okay. Obviously, yep. That's fine. Um, could it carry external? Did it get as far as being able to carry external stores as well, or was that not in the competition? I, that was not in the competition because I believe the twenty twos don't even carry external. They do now. When now they come into thing, now they come into service. I know they can take external bomb pylons and fuel tanks and stuff like that. But I, it probably really wasn't back in the competition. I doubt I'd, they would have put that stuff in. But all right, anyone want to add anything to the Black Widow? Um, the only thing was that it did have trapezoidal wings, and that was probably its downfall with its lack of maneuverability. I see. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm glad that they did um, take into account maneuverability and not just stealth and stuff like that. So, because the Raptor was very maneuverable, you know, if you just go to an air show and you just know it is, you can tell it is. Um, so, okay, fair enough. Right, so it's an interesting piece of history again. Never made it into service, but, um, you know, amazing engineering. Everything on this page is, is amazing engineering, but, yeah, really high-tech cool stuff. Right, moving on to Panavia Tornado. Now, I didn't really know they existed. Obviously, I'm aware of the Tornado, illustrious history, REF, Luftwaffe, whatnot. Um, and, you know, I'm sure it's pretty nice and whatnot, but it's this is about fighters. Um, and we've got a Tornado in here that is a fighter. And I, I, I don't know much about that. So it's Tornado. I can't read that, guys. IDS, ID5, Mark IV. Uh, Mark IV. 
Mark IV. Mark IV. So there was a... IDS Mark IV. So there was a fighting tornado. So someone tell me about this. When was it in history that we got fighting uh, tornadoes? It was introduced in 79, and it's still in service with both the Royal Air Force and the Italian Air Force. The German Air Force, and I put that in quotes because the German Air Force can barely get their fighters up in the air, and the Royal Saudi Air Force. How interesting. I suppose I should know this being British and whatnot. Okay, so it sounds like a bit of a stopgap between the kind of um, cold, the earlier Cold War-ish, the lightnings and stuff like that, and then up to the what we've got now. Obviously, we've got the typhoon, which is going to come in and, re- and replace this tornado, obviously. But So it's done its thing. Um, uh, can you hit, get me with the usual stuff? Can you get me power, speed, and ordnance, please? Yeah, before that, Cap, like you said, that you knew the Tornado Bomber, but mm-hmm. there were actually three primary variants to it. The Tornado IDS, which is the Interdictor stri- Strike mm-hmm. Fighter Bomber, the mm-hmm. Suppression of Enemy Air Defenses Tornado ECR, and the Tornado ADV, which is the Air Defense Variant Interceptor Aircraft. Hmm, how interesting. Okay. So basically, you knew this was the tornado that you knew, except you just didn't know it was a fighter as well. A fur. Okay. Right, hit me with some things, guys. What missiles are we carrying? So, uh, are we well, on? just to speed real quick, I had two Turbo Union um, Romeo Bravo 199 after burning Turbo fans. Uh, had a maximum speed of Mac 2.2. Really? No. Really? It, yeah. At 9,000 meters or 30,000 feet. A tornado goes faster than the Mach 2? At 30,000 feet, Cap. I've got to see. Is this just uh, Wikipedia? Actually, swept wing it is, so... I had no idea this was a Mach 2 plane. I thought it was, like, limited to 1.6 or something. What the hell? This is awesome. No, it can reach it. However, it may be limited by the command. I didn't know this existed. Now I want one. Get me one, please, ED. I want it. How <laughs> awesome. Right, now I'm, I know you've picked my interest now. Now I'm going to start asking questions. Do we have a big radar in this thing then? It must have had an intercept radar, right? Uh, let me check here. It had a Fox Hunter radar, A124. Oh, Roger, I don't know anything Apparently. about it. I don't know anything yeah. about it. Yeah. All the weather beyond visual range uh, weather. Okay, so it sounds like modern air-to-air intercept radar. Okay, um, what weapons have we got aboard this sucker? It had a 127 millimeter Mauser BK-27 revolver cannon. Mm-hmm. It could also carry AIM-9 Sidewinders, mm-hmm. AIM-132 Azrams. Mm-hmm. Could also carry six Mavericks, mm-hmm. twelve Brimstones. Mm-hmm. Two Storm Shadow, what the fuck, this is sounding like G.I. Joe. This, this is all British bollocks, yeah. And nine Alarm Anti-Radiation Missiles. That's pretty cool. Eagle Dynamics, we need this plane. Yeah, this sounds awesome. I reckon we probably will get one of these variants. Uh, no Amrams in there, I notice. I guess it wasn't really nope. uh, air superiority based type fighter. It has the Azram, which is a short range one, basically. Yeah. Repl- I believe it was developed... Yeah, it's used by the... Australians, the British, and the Isra- Israelis. To b- I think basically they replaced the Sidewinder with it. Roger. Okay. This is an interesting plane. Anything you guys can think to add to this quickly before we sign off? Obviously, swept wing. Uh, that's what's going to give it its speed. But anything else that's of interest? It also it had the nukes. <laughs> oh, well, there's a, there's a surprise. <laughs> okay. well, of course. What doesn't? Just spits nukes Didn't everywhere. Didn't Ewan McGregor's brother fly tornadoes and took him on a flight with him? I didn't know, but that's... Is it lucky Where they it? flew a lot lower and a lot faster than they really should have. Lols. <laughs> cool. Alright, well I'm going to go and find some videos of tornadoes when I get a minute, which basically means never, uh, but I would like to in another lifetime. It sounds awesome. Cool. Okay. And I... Oh, I wish there was one coming to riot now. Now I like them again. Cool. <laughs> Alright, anything to add before we move on anyway, because we've got to get this done. Right, okay, we're going to Republic, guys, and that at the uh, at the risk of smirching history a bit, I'd like to get through these first four pretty quickly. Um, so, first of all, we've got an F-84, I think that says, Thunderjet. What the deuce is this? When was it When was it uh, in service? If it was. Okay, fighter bomber, uh, first flight, 1946, introduction into service, 1947. That's early, 46, right, okay. Yeah, it must have been some type of uh, X 
uh, something flying beside the saber, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, well, slightly before, slightly before, yeah. Because this is straight wing, straight wing tech. This is. I believe it was a proposed day fighter. I think it was one of the first jet fighters for that the U.S. made. Because it was introduced in 1947. Roger, and it is in service. It was in service, yeah. Yes, it was. Uh, yes, seven thousand during Korean. Wow, that's amazing. It was flown during the Portuguese overseas war as well. Okay, cool. And this must be guns only, right? Uh, this it is was four aim nines. Oh, this was a long page. Uh, it's, yeah, it was. Yeah. Cool. However, it did have rockets and bombs as well. Did rockets and bombs, including one Mark Seven, seven nuclear, nuclear bomb. Of course, of course. Let's assume our favorite, our favorite bomb of the fifties. Let's just assume so. every fifty fighter is peppered with nukes. Um, so, is this? Um, did someone say it was flying in the Korean War? I get the feeling it was. Yes, it was. Cool. And it also carried six fifty cal Mark Three bounding machine guns. Nice. So that that was what moved. That was what was carried on that doctrine to the to the saber. Obviously, uh, we're talking slow here. I'm guessing. I'm talking. I'm guessing Mac 0.8 or something. I'm guessing. Uh, it's got straight wing. Six hundred twenty-two miles per hour. Five fifty knots. Yep, Mac 0.8 or something like that. Roughly. That's cool. All right. Very nice. Anything to add to that before we move on? Nope. Okay. Now I'm starting to read it again. F eighty. Four again, uh, Thunder F eighty four F Thunder Streak. Yeah, the Thunder Streak. Yeah. What's different? It, it looks was similar. What's different here, guys? It's actually swept, swept wing. wing. Oh, a swept yeah. wing. Right, so winter swept wing. So can you go? You got a date on this? Oh, take uh, fifty four. Fifty four. So we're a good. Well, this is a lot of years. This is eight years advanced from the pre. Uh, fifty four. Yeah, this is eight years in the future. So we're actually past the F-86's date. The F-86 is just retired, and we've got the Thunder Street. Right, what's what's new about this, guys? Have we got an afterburning thing? What speed are we getting? Um, um, instead of the Allison engine, you have a Wright J-65 turbojet with 7,220 pounds of thrust. Okay. And it also was faster at 695 miles per hour. Or Mach 0.91 at sea level. Hang on. So this is puny. This is slower than the Saber, and it's three or four years later than the Saber. What what was this all about? Why was why did this thing exist? It was a fighter bomber and a recon aircraft. So so I think it wasn't its number one priority. Roger. And what did it ordnance wise? Um, Again, a 650 cal M3 Browning machine guns and the nuke. But we must have had sidewinders. This is what above the saber. No. This is above the. It was a fighter bomber, so so I don't think it was implemented in this aircraft. How odd. Yeah, rockets and bombs. What are it's rockets, bombs, guns? Ah, it was. Um, the, the reason it was made, it's they wanted to bring the performance levels of the saber to the thunder, thunder jet. Hmm. All right, fair enough, guys. So it sounds like these are more at, at ground attacky fighters, whereas the North American guys were more air to air, but uh, air superior superiority by the sounds of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now we will see a horrible aircraft. Hang on, guys. Oh Jesus Christ! I'm just going to check yeah. the recording is going, and it is going fine. Right. So next we've got the. I it looks weird, but uh, the X fifty oh, I can't read it. Eighty four H Thunder Reach Screech. Screech. Thunder Screech. Oh, um, yeah. Is that a okay. Pepper Feather aeroplane? It is. Yes. Okay, sell it to me, guys. Sell it to me. What's this all about? Ram air, air turbine counter rotating props. <laughs> okay. What is, is it? Yeah. Is it? Is an experimental fighter to make it fast? Uh, first flight, 22 July 1955. They only built two. How fast was it? Uh, it was. 520. So it's slower than the things that came 10 years before it, but they made it still. Don't really uh, understand it. It was a prop aircraft. It, uh, it, was a un uh, it had an unofficial air speed record for, prop for propeller driven aircraft. Okay, but back in the time when this is life and death, you know, nations were about to get nuked. What, was it f made for a laugh? Why I don't? Why would you want to uh, make? make uh, I believe at the time this might have been an aircraft that they were trying to make. Like the A, like the A one, the Sky, right? What was that prop plane called? Okay. Yeah. Um. It was a technology tester, practically, and yeah. it was horrible. 
Yeah, I bet it was. But um, you have all kinds of aerodynamic problems with that piece of crap. Uh, one more thing, Thunder Screech uh, wa- uh, was actually uh, b- was actually because it sounded very very much. Uh, that's why it, uh, that's why only two were built because mm. it sounded too much, <laughs> too loud, like a bear or something. Yeah. The main well reason the Concorde was only allowed to fly out of oh, JFK and uh, good times. What's the, good what's times. the main uh, international airport there in London, Cap? Uh, Heathrow. Heathrow. Yeah. yeah. yeah I believe it was only allowed to fly from JFK beast. to Heathrow or LA to JFK. So one fun fact: yeah. if you don't like the Mirage's uh, inertial alignment procedure no, being I eight don't. minutes long, I think it's a pain in the ass. This one has a thirty-minute engine warm-up. <laughs> Before you can get it going. What a piece of crap. Right. <laughs> I'm just, okay. Uh, uh, by the way, one more thing. It was, it was quite possibly, uh, possibly one of the lo- uh, loudest aircraft ever built, rivaled only by the Tupolev Barrow Bomber. Yeah, I thought so. I, I get the feeling you've got supersonic blades going on here or something like that. Er, uh, earning the nickname Mighty Earbanger. God. I would, I would have liked to have heard it. Uh, it would be cool. All right, guys. Um, yeah. Obviously, he didn't play a big part in his huge part in history, so we're going to move on to a quite a cool looking thing, the kind of plane I would like, an XF91, I think. That is Thunder Chunky something. I can't read that. What is that? Thunder Scepter. <laughs> All right, guys. Is, yeah. is this service or experimental? Prototype. Prototype? <laughs> and, and what was it all about? Was It, it looks almost rockety. What is it? Interceptor aircraft. Uh, it was a mixed propulsion prototype interceptor aircraft developed by by Republic. What was the propulsion? Had, uh, oh, uh, okay. Uh, it had a jet ender en- engine for most flight, and a cluster of uh, four small rocket engines mm-hmm. uh, for added thrust during lab and interception. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a bad idea, really. Because um, uh, y- 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 yeah. Okay. Anyway, carry on, guys. Uh, one more thing, it has a stupid wing design. Just take a look at it. I can't see the wings. I can't see the wings, but tell it. It's tell me roughly what it what it is. Um, uh, it's hard look to look at your hand, Cap, mm-hmm. and close your fingers together. The tip of your finger is where it connects to the fuselage. The end of your hand is the tip of the wing. Interesting. Oh my God! Now you can talk. Uh, what the? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <it's> horrible. <laughs> what noob yeah. made that? Hey noob, that's your aeroplane. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god! All right, okay, I'm coming back. It did. It did go fast, 984 miles per hour. Really? Back in ni- 1947. Shit! It must have had a skinny wing. That's all I can think. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I'm glad it's here because it's a nice piece of history. So it went um, some miles per hour. Well, has anyone got a Mac reading on that? 1.3ish sounds roughly, very roughly. That's about right. And uh, rough time in history. When was this? Late 1940s, early 50s. Oh wow! So, 49. It, so it was early then. So fair play to it then. To you know, to get that fast back then and whatnot. But all right, obviously it does. Uh, it sounds to me like it was never really meant to go into service. Uh, it sounds like you were yeah. trying to break, trying to break, break records and stuff like that. All right. However, they did have it with four 20 millimeter cannons. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Right. Let's move on to something a bit more successful. Um, something I don't know a lot about but it's you know it's, uh, it's had a bit of a checkered history f-105 thunder chief okay fighter bomber uh must have preceded the f-4 phantom memory serves me right my what do i know about it it used to be based at i think RAF alconbury uh, about 20 miles away from me and i do remember them thundering over uh prolific use in the early parts of the um not the Korea War, the Vietnam War, uh, laying down napalm high explosives. Um, let's get to some facts and figures, guys. When was this made? What was its service? And let's carry on from there. All right, it was made in the 50s, and the first flight was in 55. It was flown primarily during the Vietnam War. It was a supersonic fighter bomber, and it was Mach 2 capable. No, nah, really? A two-seat version wild we- for wild weaseling was made as well. Nice. <laughs> nice. And interesting about it is two wild weasel pilots were awarded the Medal of Honor for attacking North Vietnamese surface-to-air missile sites, where one of them shot down two MiG-17s the same day. What a man! And these missions, when you went went up, the 
it required you and the Thunder Chief to be the first in and last out. Oh my god, this is when hip proper pilots, nice, nice. Uh, let's get some quick technical specs. Um, what engine is that? What power have we got there? Uh, Pratt yeah. Whitney yeah. J75. It's 75, is it? So what's that about? 18,000 pounds? Yeah, and it was only a single one, and at afterburner it had 24,500 pounds of thrust. That's just pretty impressive. It must have, it's a thumping engine there, and it's a big old jet by the looks of it. Uh, you got a big swept wing there. Um, must have been, it looks like a pig to fly, I'm sure it was. Before fly by wire, obviously. Mach 2 capable, I'm amazed about that, but cool. Um, yeah, we're Mach 2.08. Very impressive. Uh, what armament are we here? We early so we got some early sidewinders on this thing. Uh, it carried a 120 millimeter M61 Vulcan, and it had five hard points where it, it would carry and an inter five hard points and an internal bomb bay. Oh wow! And it. it Ha could carry 14,000 pounds of ordnance, mm -hmm. including a nuke, and it did carry sidewinders and the AGM-12 bullpup. Interesting. Okay. It sounds like a very interesting plane, actually. I might have to look into it a bit more. Um, keep it's, hit me it's with things here. Vietnam version of your A-10, basically. is dedicated yeah, for basically. everything that the A-10 does. Mac 2 A-10. Uh, my memory, as my memory serves me, there were some problems with it. Do, uh, do we know anything about that, or is that my, just being a bad memory? Uh, I think it was just a bad fighter, which meant it got shot down several times or something, if I remember right. I am reading here, like at the beginning of the Vietnam War part, it does say it had a troubled early service life. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It'd be interesting to watch some documentaries on the Thunder Chief then okay um, anything else on the Thunder Chief before we I think the Bombay was my main, main surprise anything on the Thousand Thunder Chief before we uh, carry on it took 1.7 minutes to get to 35,000 feet oh god that doesn't mean a lot to me traps is that quick? 2 minutes 35,000 okay sounds like it's boasting so it's probably quick it's pretty fast of, of the time cool maybe we'll get one in DCS then what a weird plane to fly about kind of um, Mach 2 fighter bombing about little early sidewinders hardly any manoeuvrability uh, Bombay I think that'll be an interesting thing to fly at least but cool I mean it was a proper wild wheeze aircraft mm -hmm. so if we get it in DCS it should be able to dodge Sam's left and right mm -hmm. or anything before we sign off the Thunder Chief Cool. Oh. Saab, tail. This is your area. This is your area. Oh yeah. So we got a J twenty nine Tukan or Tukan or Tunan. Oh, oh, Tunan. Sell it to me, tail. Go. Yeah. Okay. It, um, it was the first purpose-built fighter in Sweden, made by Saab. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a first flight, nineteen forty-eight. Mm -hmm. Introduction, nineteen fifty-one. It had a really troubled start of the service period, since it didn't have any training aircraft mm -hmm. and it was the first swept win and, and and yet aircraft which meant several pilots died yeah right the Saab is always pushing the boundaries obviously okay yeah um, it held two two speed records if I rem remember right during its time and uh, and it could carry sidewinders really yes wow must be in the early A's or B's or something. RB-24 air-to-air missiles. Oh, the, yeah, well, they just rename them, don't they, basically? Yeah, yeah probably. Exactly. Interesting little plane. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, one it, was it was nicknamed the Flying Barrel Cat. Yeah, exactly. Turn none. That's the same thing. Okay. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, it had four times 20 millimeters Hispano Mark V out water cannon. Mm-hmm. It had 75 millimeter air-to-air -air unguided rockets. Mm, yeah. Plus, it had anti-armor rockets, high explosive rockets, and anti-ship rockets. It did also have an napalm tanks, mm -hmm. and it had bombs. Sounds like a little beastie, to be honest. Uh, yeah, exactly. It was uh, fighting well with a MiG-15 and with a F-86. Cool. Nice little beast, nice little piece in history. I never knew. Did it? Uh, did it ever see action? I doubt it. But. Uh, it saw action it did. in the Congo. 
Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. Uh, un uh, under UN flag, it was actually one of Sweden less liked operation. We are somewhat like you. Yeah. Uh, why did we do that? Nah, <laughs> lol. Uh, you helped the Irish, did you, Swedes? Uh, just one problem. We used uh, modern aircraft against tribes mm -hmm, on the ground yeah. with rockets and would. modern fighters. Hey, Kale, in war there's no such thing as overkill. Yes, I know, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's something that Swedes aren't proud of. Alright, gents. That's you might not be proud of it, but the British learned that you should not underestimate a tribe let's move on <laughs> boys let's move on uh j32 can't read it lanson lanson yeah lanson. yeah lanson never heard of it uh, go um it, uh, it was a sweden second uh, jet aircraft a uh, 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 rather purpose-built fighter attack and recon aircraft uh, it, uh, it could carry nukes sweden actually had a nuclear program uh, and uh, and it had the first flight in 1952, introduction mm -hmm. 1956, and it operated all the way to 1997. Wow, that's actually quite impressive. Is that a uh, swept wing? We're not a supersonic at this point, are we? Uh, uh, let me check because I think it was maybe uh, 1,200 kilometers per hour. God, I can't do that. So well. yes, 747 not. miles per hour. Yeah, so it sounds like it's just subsonic. Okay. Um, yeah, off the burners. Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, actually, the J29 also had off the burners. Really? Contact. Jesus Christ. Yes, I forgot that. Uh, and sweet. yeah, it could carry a little bit of everything. Four times 30 millimeters cannon. Four times air to air missiles four times r 2 i rocket pods and the nuke and much more wow these little swedish planes they shouldn't be they shouldn't be messed with should they uh, yeah plus it also had anti-ship missiles <laughs> of course you know as you do when you're a swede yeah yeah uh, yeah we are somehow good at building aircraft yeah it always seems to be ahead of the game but okay fair enough what's a nice piece of history uh something very very interesting is that a uh, j35 draken we've got there yeah, exactly, Dragon. Oh, is it Drac- Oh, is that what I mean? Right, obviously, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. And you've got a weird swept wing thing here. I don't know if anyone can get a picture of it. Oh, yeah, of it, it is a dual swept wing aircraft. Uh, and uh, and it was a single engine, mainly interceptor. Okay, time in history. When was this? Uh, it was in 1955, first flight, and, wow. uh, and in production 1960. And, and, and did it actually fly all the way to 2005 in Austria? Yeah, and the, uh, some of these things are still flying because we still have them in English air shows. Uh, they come over, believe it or not. Uh, yes, we have several. Uh, plus, I think the Draken Aviation in the US mm -hmm. operates them. Wow, what an absolute beast! Um, okay, so what's uh, so uh, mid 50? So what speeds are we at here, Tail? Uh, it's. Uh, let me check here. Mark two. It is a Mark two. No, don't. Yes, it is. Yes. Don't you do it to yes, me. Yes, it is. How? It's a Mark two cap. Yeah. Oh. Uh, plus, it's maybe coming to DCS. Oh. Hitler's ha uh, uh, is at least making an AI model. Yeah. Which is maybe turning into a full module later. Right. So, what armament are we talking? So, what, sorry, what was its um, service span again? I'm just. When was it in? Uh, all the way to 2005, from 1950 something. So it's been upgraded, obviously, every 10 years or yeah. so. So it's going to be hard, really, to talk about ordnance. But let's talk about, uh, I guess, I mean, the early models. So they must have been bopping around with early sidewinders on or something. Uh, J35F Dragon, which was, uh, uh, let me check here. Uh, it was in, uh, uh, in 1965 it started production. Mm -hmm. uh, it had uh, RB-24 sidewinders then, yeah. uh, it had RB-27, which are air-to-air -air Falcon missiles, mm -hmm. AIM-4, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and also RB-28, which are also another type of Falcon missile. Interesting, okay. Uh, it also had rockets, 275mm air-to-ground rockets, mm -hmm. or 12 times 135 millimeter rockets. Not sure. So we've got... It it had also um, inbuilt guns, two or one times, depending if it was trainer or fighter aircraft. Okay, um, got an afterburning, one afterburning engine, is that right? Uh, it was the Volvo Flugmotor, which was a licensed Rolls-Royce Avon engine. Oh, it was an Avon, okay. 
Yeah, yeah uh, with the afterburner, of, of course. Uh, and it had bombs. So it's the same engine, just so you know. Only the Danish version, too. It's the same engine as yeah. that in the, in the English Electric Lightning, that one there, just so you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, excellent. A real, real piece of history. I'd like to know more about this. Um, anything else you want to add to the Draken, generally, guys? Uh, it was a bloody good aircraft, uh, w which could uh, do the Cobra maneuver quite yeah, good. Yeah, lols. Bloody Swedes always making these amazing aircraft that shouldn't look like they shouldn't fly, but always to fly. Okay, this and am I right in saying? Am I right in saying the Vigan superseded the Draken? Uh, or rather, the uh, let me tell this: the Vigan was like uh, air to ground version, mm -hmm. uh, uh, while the Draken was more air to air. Right. Right. It, it replaced the Lanson. Yeah. I replaced the Lanson. From... Right. That's what the Vigan did. Okay. Obviously. Now we've got the ground attack version, the AJS thirty seven Vigan, uh, which is an absolute thumper of a plane. Big, relatively heavy, hugely powerful, amazingly fast um, aircraft. Not much of a fighter. The version that we've got. It's got some boresight kind of um, uh, aim nines, uh, but no real, no air to air radar or anything. And um, I didn't really know this existed. The JA thirty seven. So what's this? An a fighter version, is that right? Um, it has um, r recon, fighter, and attack versions. Mm -hmm. um, it w it started developing in uh, or rather developing uh, first flight nineteen sixty seven. Mm -hmm. uh, introduction nineteen seventy one, and it retired two thousand five in Sweden. Is this the the vegan year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. but uh, but it didn't have any exports. Mm. Which was quite surprising, but yeah, Swedish politics. Okay, let's get some facts and figures for the JA37 model. Can we let's talk about the engine and let's talk about how fast this jet went? It had a Volvo RM8 turbofan uh, with maximum speed of Mach 2.1. Really? So it was over Mach 2? I had no idea about that. Okay, and what ordnance are we kicking on here for the JA37? Uh, it uh, it had um, AIM 120 AMRAMs. Wow. Six AIM 9 uh, Sidewinder. Yeah. Uh, it had uh, two RB 71 Skyflash. What's the AIM 7 Sparrow variant? Yeah, Roger. Yeah. yeah. Plus it had the ECM pod, one inbuilt cannon, and. Uh, yeah, that's about it. It sounds like a real beastie then, it really does. So it sounds like through the ages it's been upgraded, Sparrows to AMRAMs, and for all this work obviously it's going to have the radar, so it must have had a big air-to-air -air radar in there. Yeah, exactly. I think it had at least. Roger, yeah, it must have had for any of, the, any of these missiles to track and work. Okay, what a beastie. Um, I wonder if it still had the same maneuverability problems as the uh, AJS, which is the uh, stalling of the engine. Cause huge problem for the EAJS. Yes, it had, because it didn't have any bigger modifications between them except system-wise. Roger, so this definitely wasn't a dogfighter then, this was an intercept charging at Mach 2, launch your AMRAMs and get out, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's Swedish aircraft policy is, uh, is usually e intercept because our defense policy is defense. Roger, and that's simply geographic based at the end of the day. You've got a different yeah. uh, MO to other countries. Okay, fair enough. Very interesting piece of equipment. Anything to add to the JA-37 before we move on? Wonderful aircraft. There you go, said by the man himself. Right, uh, move on to the Gripen, the, the uh, modern day replacement for the Saabs, and it's, uh, what do you call it, 4 plus gen, something like that. So it's not a stealthy doodar as far as I'm aware, but it's a modern, uh, it's, it's a very, already a very successful fighter. It appears to have done already very well in the export market, and um, it's just a modernized version. Of, um, of 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 the Vigna, I suppose, uh, swept wing four plane. Uh, sorry, uh, Delta wing four plane, single engine. A uh, very impressive in Raya every year. I must, I must admit, that's pretty much all I know about it. So, someone else take it away. All right. So, the Gripen E, or as we know it in Arma, the Griffin, is a Swedish light aircraft. It's multi-role, and it's also Delta wing. It was introduced in '96, and the first flight was in '88. Like Cap said, it's doing well in the export market, where a lot of countries, they are buying Gripen C's and D's, while 
the grip in ENF, only a few countries that I know of are getting them, including Sweden themselves and Brazil, who had a competition in the grip and beat out the Desalt Rafael and mm -hmm. the F-18 Super Hornet. Nice. I wonder how it beat them, because it looks like such a tiddly little thing. And even at air shows, it looks like a harmless little tiddler. Really quiet little engines and doesn't doesn't make much of a present for itself. But it seems to win everything. Uh, price and it was the I believe Sweden was the only one that offered full technology technological Dyer. trade to Brazil. So Brazil would get all of the technological info on the Gripen. Right. So all, all rights signed over, basically. How interesting. Yeah, basically. And, and like I said, there I believe they're only one of the few that are going to be getting the grip in E and F, and they should be starting receiving them next year. And do we say, um, in Sweden at least, when, when did it start service history? Cause someone said 80, uh, it sounded a bit early. Uh, it, it, 96. Yeah. 96, okay, so near the millennium, okay, that sounds a bit more like it. Yeah, its first flight was in 88. Yeah, I guess that was early, early in uh, experiment. Okay, let's get some quick facts and figures. Let's get uh, some engine details and some max speed. Not that it really matters, but it's interesting for me. All right, f this the details I have is only for the C and D because mm -hmm. I don't believe they released for the E and F. It has a single Volvo RM12 afterburning turbofan, which at afterburner provides 18,100 pounds of thrust. It can do Mach 2 hmm. or 1,370 miles per hour at high altitude. It has a decent thrust to weight ratio at 0 0.97. That is very... 0 0.97, that is very good, isn't it? Yes. And its maximum G-load is plus 9 Gs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's no, but no doubt it's maneuverable from what I've seen. Yeah, I've seen the maneuvering mm -hmm. of it. It's amazing. It has 127mm Mauser BK-27 mm -hmm. revolver cannon, and that's in the single seat only with 120 rounds. It can carry four times rocket pods, or it can carry six AIM-9 Sidewinders, or the RB-74 for the Swedes, or the Iris-T RB-98, or a Darter. It can carry four times AMRAMs, or RB-99, or the Mika missiles, four Meteor missiles, four AGM-64 Mavericks, two KEPD.350, and as a Swede, it can carry two RBS 15F anti ship missiles. Yeah, no, lols. It can also carry four times GBU 12s, cool. two times BK 90 cluster bombs, or eight times Mark 82s. I wonder if everyone's bought this bloody thing. Uh, 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 by the way, one, f uh, one more thing. Um, it uh, 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 ev uh, every aircraft has a, has an intercom system between different aircraft units, just like the SU-27 in this Yeah, data, data link type thing. Yeah, exactly, data link. What a little beastie, those cheeky little Swedes. Yeah, uh, uh, plus it's actually made it, 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 uh, to be unstable. Yeah, so it seems a pretty standard thing nowadays. Just yeah. like the 16. Exactly. Hey uh, Matt, if you're watching this, get us this before the F-16. Mm, I don't think we'll get this. I think it's too modern, guys. Uh, we won't get access to any of the tech. But uh, I think the C and D we might. I don't think the Swedes classify a lot of their shit. Mm. Nah. Uh, uh, by the way, one more thing. Uh, it is uh, actually... Uh, uh, what the heck? I was about to have something. Forget it. Right, anything on the Gripen before we start off on that? Uh, My tail, I'm interested. Mm. Oh, uh, uh, it is practically uh, t today's equivalent to the F-20 Tiger Short. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. it even looks the same from the side. Cheap, good, fast, just a good, f uh, you know, but affordable and um, universal. Very uh, really, really easy to maintain too. I have seen it in person. All right, well done guys, let's crack on. Uh, right, so we're going to the end, to the absolute behemoth that is this oh. thing. That is, it's like a, the size of a bear bomber. What's it doing here? It's a TU-1, I can't read it, guys, 120-something? 128. 128. 128 Fiddler. Now, I didn't know this existed, and, and in fact, this is the whole reason I kind of started this fighter series. Uh, I, I saw a big picture um, with uh, a Fiddler in it, 
Um, and I thought, oh, this is amazing. So I grabbed all the little bits, just put them together into this big picture, and now we're doing what we're doing. Um, because I didn't know this existed. Um, I don't know anything about this. It just looks amazing, and the size of it is amazing. Who wants to crack off? Crack off, nice. Who wants to crack on with what on earth this thing is? Careful around it, Cap. It's gonna fiddle you. Mm. Yeah. It was a, it was a long-range intercept aircraft produced by the Soviet Union in the 60s. 60s. So this is before the MiG-25, or same time, or I don't know. So is it, uh, is I don't know, Cap. You still have to do attack and bombers. Is it? Is it? Is it a thing? Did it come into service as well? It did. Uh, it did. Yeah. Right. It it almost two hundred. It was retired in the nineties. Can we have a service? Yeah, I was going to say, can we have a service history of it, please? When did it come into service? When did it finish service? Uh, when sixty-four did... or sixty-six, depending on who you ask. But yeah, like sixty-four to the nineteen nineties. Okay. So, and it was an interceptor, so it was designed to get up, get fast, and shoot down bombers? Question mark. Yeah, yes. exactly. It was mainly a bomber interceptor since it couldn't dogfight for you actually yeah, because of its sure. size. Uh, uh, maximum weight was 43 tons. <laughs> so 100,000 pounds. <laughs> nice. Yeah, which is insane. Okay, uh, it's going to be some kind of big swept wing twin engine thing. Let's just get some figures on this thing. We know when it was. Uh, has it got two engines and what were they? What power were they? Sure. Oh, Liuka AL 7F2 after burning turbojets. And at afterburner, they produced twenty-two thousand two hundred seventy pounds each. Pretty puny, really. Oh, I guess. Well, mm, mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, Max speed one point five mark. Well, that's puny. When armed. So yeah. I still don't understand why this was made. It's a big, slow interceptor. I mean, it's very Russian, obviously. It makes a statement, but okay. There's that. Um, uh, at a three hour endurance because of how big Russia is so you need oh now I'm starting to get it right because I had a maximum ceiling of 65,000 feet for those big you know think B-52s things like that right you know I think the Russians wanted to shoot down the, our U-2 spy planes but they never but they didn't know we had the SR-71 right yeah. I'm starting to get it now so because geographical reasons it's so big they wanted a thing that could take off and fly thousands of miles basically and intercept stuff yeah. Okay. Uh, one more thing. It had only four missiles. It's so huge and only has four missiles. Wow, that is focused design. Okay. And what were they? And it usually only carried two times radar guided R4Rs and two times infrared homing R4Ts. Okay. I don't know anything about that missile, but it sounds like they're whopping great early early models probably with a long range and, and stuff like that i notice there's t is there two pilot two people in here weapons officer or something or i think it is i i am thinking yes exactly pilot and radar operator pilot and radar for the interception must have a big old radar on it yeah must really look out and reach um did this ever thing ever see any kind of action anywhere i doubt it but intercepting aircraft <laughs> yeah I mean they, they, the Cold War never happened as such did it so it, yeah. it presumably never had to do its job but yeah I just think it's interesting I never even seen it existed okay anything else that we know about this weird weird jet it's mysterious it is very mysterious I don't know if I want it or not I don't think so what would I do with it um, uh, in, in, in this yes it's completely worthless since we are limited by map size yeah it's like we take off and yeah. You barely be spooled up the engines by the time we're at the other end of the map. Well, yeah, it had a purpose. It had purpose-built long-range air-to-air missile, and at that time in the '60s, long-range meant 25 kilometers. 25. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Back then. Mm, cool. Yeah. The thing with it too, I believe one thing they made it for was also probably to go to towards Alaska because the U.S. and Russia mm -hmm. are close at those points, mm -hmm. and in the 60s, the U.S. and Russia were on the brink of nuclear war, as we know. The Cold War. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Anything to add to the fiddler? Right, well then, guys, I thought this was going to be quite a boring um, 
uh, boring episode because I just had a quick look and I didn't see any, you know, huge names, fighter names, but it was really interesting. We learned loads. So that's uh, that done. There'll be one more episode, which will be the last, um, which will be the uh, column five, and then we'll go on and, I don't know, do bombers or whatever we want to do next, basically, because uh, I think everyone seems to enjoy it. Right, I'm going to sign off now. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you later.